Jorgen. Again. Again. Remember when we did our one year episode? Like a week or two ago? Yeah. <laughs> that was so long ago. I can't hardly remember. Do you remember what I said was one of my favorite episodes of all time? Damn it. What have you done? I have done what the people have asked me to do. What you asked you to do? Exactly. And we are bringing back Crime or Capped, the sequel. I hate you so much. <laughs> to be fair, I did tell you that you were going to hate me. And for everyone, I want everyone to understand that Jordan had no idea I was doing this. No, I did not. I was not mentally prepared to hate you this much. I was mentally prepared to hate you a little bit, but not like this. I literally sent her a message right before we got here to record. I'm like, you are going to hate me today. And that's all I told her. I was prepared to hate you a little. I was not prepared to hate you like this. So today I have 10 questions for you. And I think you did a little too good on the last episode. So I have made it harder. These cases, some of them are well known. Some of them are so obscure. I didn't even know about them until I found them. And you only get one, maybe two sentences to describe the case. I want you all to know I'm failing this. <laughs> just without even, I just know I'm going to fail it. It is 100% designed to make sure you fail. And the fans get to decide your punishment if you do fail. What's it going to be this time? I don't know. That's why I'm going to let them decide because uh, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> great. So, yeah, we got 10 questions. You have to get at least six correct to pass. I am prepared to fail. Start thinking of my punishment now. Welcome to another intriguing episode of All Things Mysterious, the podcast where all the realms of true crime, supernatural, and the unexplained converge. I'm your host, Jordan. I'm Matt. We're ready to plunge into today's fascinating mysteries. Let's dive right in. Are you ready, Jordan? To fail? Yes. So... Are you ready for question number one? Why the hell not? All right. Just to refresh everybody's memory, I will give two cases, a little bit of detail, usually one to two sentences. One of them is going to be correct. One of them is going to be totally made up by me. Are you ready, Jordan? To fail, yes. Question one. A. A 10-year-old Taylor disappears from her grandparents' house. Her remains are found 10 years later, 800 miles away. Or B, a nine-year-old girl disappears from her North Carolina home in the middle of the night. Her backpack was found years later, but she remains missing. You guys can't hear this, but there's a clock just ticking in here. <laughs> it's really just ticking on my nerves. It, it's just a clock that's always in here, and it just, right now, it just fits so well with the theme. Oh, I feel like no matter what I pick, I'm going to lose. I, my gut feeling says one answer, which means I feel like it's probably the other one. But then I feel like you're tricking me, so I want to go back to my gut. You know what? I'm going to feel this anyway. I say B. B? Yep. Final answer? That's what it's going to have to be. I'm failing it anyway. I'm nice, so I will give you one more chance. Are you sure that's your final answer? I'm going to fail it anyway, so B. Jordan, you are correct. One. 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 I got one. Let the record show I actually got one for once in my freaking life. One. 
That's probably the only one I'm getting, you guys. One. The story is about Asha Degree, who disappeared. Oh, I know in- Asha's story. I yeah. feel like that's why I knew it. She disappeared in 2000. Okay. Good job. Question two. And to be fair, this is one of the questions that I think you should get easily. Which means I'm going to fail it. (laughs) A rural cabin in California, a family was brutally murdered. Despite numerous leads and suspect, the case remains unsolved. Or B, a family is killed in a cabin in southern Florida. A neighbor is arrested and convicted, but many believe he is innocent. Feel like it was the I feel like it was A, but I also feel like Florida. Can you read them again real quick? Yeah. Okay, so first one, A is a rural cabin in California. A family was brutally murdered. Despite numerous leads and suspect, the case remains unsolved. And then a family is killed in a cabin in southern Florida. A f- neighbor is arrested and convicted, but many believe he is innocent. I feel like if that was a fake story, you wouldn't have had to fix it. You guys can't <laughs> see it right now, but she's like staring me down trying to get any kind of information she can. I'm just like cycling random cases that I know the barest hints of through my head. And I'm going to be honest, I'm really bad with locations. So he knows this and he's using it against me. I will give you a hint. This is a case that I have talked about doing. That doesn't help me at all. You've talked about doing 7 million cases. Excessive. (laughs) Screw it. I'm picking B again strictly because you changed it. Even though I kind of wanted to pick A originally, but I'm picking B because you changed it. I feel like if the information didn't matter, you would have left the same. But then you changed it. You're smiling. I don't like that. (laughs) Don't. The correct answer is A. Damn it, I was right the first time. (laughs) I hate you. So A is the Keddie Cabin Murders. Happened in 1981. And that is a case that I've talked about doing before. Should have trusted my gut to begin with. (laughs) All right. I'm 50-50 right now. You're doing actually better than I thought. Question three. A. A woman is found dead under suspicious circumstances after years of stalking and harassment. Authorities are divided over whether it was murder or suicide. B. A woman is found dead in her home with no obvious signs of foul play. One detective was fired for treating it as a homicide in California. Honestly, I kind of feel like B threw in a super fun detail because that does sound like something that would happen in California. But I also don't know if I recognize either case. And unfortunately, both of those could easily happen, which really makes me sad. I'm going with A. Final answer? Final answer. I'm sorry to say, Jordan, you got it right. Yes. That is the killing of Cindy James in 1989 in Canada. Another case that I I didn't know about until this. We're going to have to look into these. I think a lot of these I want to actually do an episode on just because they seem like really cool cases. Question four. Three teenagers are stabbed to death while camping at Lake Bodum. A surviving witness and several suspects have emerged, but the case remains unsolved. B. A group of teenagers are hunted and killed at a summer camp near a lake. The killer has never been captured. I feel like it's B. I feel like for some reason I recognize that. Even though A has a little more detail, I feel like you're throwing me off with that. Final answer. B? Yep. B would be recognizable to you because it is the plot of Friday the 13th. Is it? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. My actual first thought was the Girl Scout murders. 
And but they were too young for that. And it is the incorrect answer because the correct answer is A, the Lake Bodum murders in 1960 in Finland. Yep. I was thinking the Girl Scout murders, but I was like, they were too young for that, I think. <laughs> You want to know what's funny? I don't think I've ever actually seen Friday the 13th. Really? No, I don't think I actually have. Now, granted, I've absorbed like 90% of it through pop culture and reference and all that. But That was literally the plot to Friday the 13th. No, no, that makes perfect sense, actually. I'm not even mad about it. Which I was but over- I had a specific case in mind. They were just, they were too young for it. But I was like, I don't know. It kind of resonates. I was literally like, whenever you said that you recognize I was over here trying not to smile and laugh. I was thinking the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders. <laughs> Question five. And you are doing, you got two correct, two correct and two incorrect. So you're still at 50%. You know what? I'll take that. I'm, I'm doing better than I was last time. Question five. A woman is murdered and her husband is arrested. He promptly escapes and a manhunt ensues. Question B. The bodies of a priest and a choir singer are found together in New Jersey. The nature of their relationship draws attention, but the case is never solved. What was the first one again? A woman is murdered and her husband is arrested. He promptly escapes and a manhunt ensues. B. Are you sure? No, but I'm just going to say fuck it. Locking you in. You are correct. The Hall Mills murder in 1922. And for the record, A is the plot of the fugitive. (laughs) I had a feeling it was. I'm learning your cues. But I'm not telling you which cues you're using either. We'll see if that keeps up. Question six. A family of four is brutally murdered in their home in Tokyo. The killer stayed in the house for hours after the crime, leaving behind DNA that has never been identified. Four men are accused of a crime they didn't commit. They escape and help people while on the run. That one sounds like a movie. Okay, what was the first one? Because you didn't separate them a whole lot. A, a family of four is brutally murdered in their home in Tokyo. The killer stayed in the house for hours after the crime, leaving behind DNA that has never been identified. B, is four men are accused of a crime they didn't commit. They escape and help people while on the run. I'm going with A. You don't look very sure of that. I'm not, but I have barely been sure of literally any answer I've given, so screw it. You are correct. Family murders in 2000 in Japan. B is the plot of the ATM. My first reaction was, no, that sounds like a movie. I was hoping that it would sound too much like a movie that you would second guess yourself. And you kind of did, but... For a second, yes. Now, for the record, those are the questions I wanted you to get. Cool. Great. Question seven. A university student is murdered in her locked dorm. With no evidence, police are convinced a demon killed her in 1901. B. A University of North Carolina student is brutally beaten to death in her apartment. Despite DNA evidence and a large reward, the killer remains at large. And to help you out, this is actually a case that we have talked about. Going with A. Final? Final answer. Let me tell you guys, this ticking clock, (laughs) putting the pressure on. I'm going to have to add a ticking clock in post just to... The pressure is real. The correct answer is... B. The murder of Faith Hedgepith in 2012. Question 8. A. A nurse who claims to be a vampire 
survived for 20 years on the blood of her elderly patients in the long-term care facilities she worked at. B, a nurse killed at least 40 patients by injecting them with lethal doses of medication. He evaded detection for years before being arrested. I know I've seen the second one on TV shows 82 times, but I don't know if it's a real case or not. But I feel like they got it from somewhere. But at the same time, someone's definitely crazy enough to do the first one. But could you survive on that? No. Medically speaking, yes, you can. Doesn't make any sense. And by survived, that's not the only thing she ate, but that was the main consistency of her diet. But she did eat other stuff, too. Are you looking on your phone? No, I'm fidgeting. Oh. <laughs> I thought fidgeting. you were sitting over there trying to look out the case. No, I'm just fidgeting. I'm going with B, and mostly just because I straight up don't even have the slightest clue, and I'm going to lose this anyway. B, screw it. Why not? You are doing really good today. That is correct. I win. That is the angel of death who, from 1980 to 2003, and yes, there had been many TV shows based on him. Yep, that's what I thought. I was like, I know I've seen a lot of different shows about it, and it had to have come from something. The one thing I'm learning is next time this needs to be way harder because it's apparently too easy. I'm just guessing correctly this time. This is not easy. <laughs> Question nine. A. A college student disappears after crashing her car in New Hampshire. The strange circumstances surrounding her disappearance have led to numerous theories, but no trace of her has been found. B. A car is found in a rest area almost completely stripped of all parts. The owner is a 25-year-old female, and she has never been found. I feel like it's A, because I, I do a lot of missing persons cases. And I have a specific case in mind, but I feel like it can't be that because it's too obvious. But I'm just going to go with A, because why not? Why not? Should have went with your gut on this one. I always should, but, you know, I just don't trust it anymore. Actually, I think what we're learning is you should not go with your gut. Because the correct answer is A, the disappearance of Maura Murray. That was what I was guessing. It was Maura Murray. I win. <laughs> I knew it was Maura Murray. I've actually wanted to cover her case for a little bit. So what I'm discovering here is this is way too easy. And the first time Jordan really second-guessed herself, which really hurt her. Yeah, no, Maura Murray, her case is so weird because she literally just poof gone into nowhereness. And it's just bizarre. Her case is right up there with another case of mine that I want to cover who's a missing person. And it just it's one of those cases that a lot of people, it, it's kind of like the Eleanor Greenberg case for me. It's kind of up there, but hers isn't quite as far up on the list. I'm sorry to say that you have actually already won. Yes! I win! I finally win something! I never win! I never win! I never win ever. Hold on, we still got one more question, though. I'm probably going to lose it, but I don't care. I don't care. Question 10. A serial killer dismembered at least 12 victims in Ohio. Despite a large investigation, the killer has never been identified. Or B... A man's wife and daughter are killed. The men who killed them get almost no jail time. When they are released, he kills them in revenge. And I should add that he dies in prison. A. Sure. No. No, I'm not sure. Final answer? It's as final as it's going to get. <laughs> Damn it. You're correct. That is about the Cleveland Torso Murders in 1930. I knew you'd work a serial killer in there. You hadn't yet. I know. When I did the Zodiac Killer, you freaking totally missed that one. 
Yep, I had a feeling you'd work one in there. <laughs> I'm learning how you work, Matthew. So the one thing I've learned from this is I've got to make this much harder next time. I expected to fail. I'm really proud of myself right now. Hey, you did really good. You got 8 out of 10. So I'm actually pleasantly upset because you didn't fail. I am shocked as shit right now. <laughs> well, I guess we'll never be able to release this episode. It's not fun. You won. I expected to fail. I can't believe I didn't fail. You yeah. guys can't see it, but I'm literally doing a dance. <laughs> I think that's, I think the first time you severely like were stuck in guessing yourself, which is why you failed. And I don't think you did that as much. No, this time I literally just said, screw it, I'm dying anyway. <laughs> oh, by the way, that last question, the plot was loosely based on Law Abiding Citizen. I had a feeling you were just using movies at some point. I only used movies for like three of them. Most of them were, I was hoping that they would be familiar enough to you that you'd be like, hey, I remember this. But then you can't exactly place where you remember it from. That kind of worked on one of them, <laughs> but I placed it wrong. <laughs> I placed it with a true crime case. But I, in my head, though, I was like, no, because the Girl Scout murders were like little. So I was like, kind of, but no. And then I was like, maybe there's a different one. I need to cover that case. Yeah. And that's what I know, like, even finding these cases. Like, because a lot of these I didn't even know about. Uh, and it took me a while to um, find these cases. Thank you for joining us on this journey through all things mysterious. Your engagement is what makes this so rewarding. If you've enjoyed uncovering these mysteries with us, please show your support by liking, subscribing, and following us on your favorite listening platform. For more intriguing content and ways to stay connected, don't forget to check us out on our links in the description below. Your involvement is the key to unlocking more thrilling mysteries. As always, we keep you guessing.